He pulls himself onto his tiptoes to peek inside the crumbling walls of the old house. He sees the tips of two large black wings in the other room. Trying to get a better look, the bricks give way and he tumbles backwards. He looks up to the fresh hole in the wall and his own face staring back at him, a crack in the antique mirror's glass splitting it in two. The winged shadow looms over his image, and he feels a feather brush the back of his neck. It's a deal, the voice whispers. The big black wolf barreling towards the kids is shunted to the side with a large bang taken out by a single shot. The teacher checks on his kids and thanks God none of them are hurt. It's a miracle the ranger found them. They are led back to safety in a warm fire where a second shadow joins the teachers in dancing on the cabin wall. The large flower covered half the deck and had appeared overnight, roots embedded in the woodwork. Some hacked at the vines to free their ship, while others tried to stop their fellow crewmen from jumping overboard into the shark-infested waters. As if the cursed flower wasn't enough, a storm began to rage. At its peak, the ship nearly capsized at every wave and lightning lit up the sea, one bolt coming down to the ship and striking the flower. It was set ablaze, and the crew rushed to douse it before the ship was engulfed. In moments, the storm had calmed. In days, the friends they managed to keep on board were back to themselves, and for the rest of the journey, they sang songs of Poseidon. The small drones stumbled over the crumbled stones and into the central chamber. Cameras fed images to monitors back at camp. It records statues of beasts, water dripping off their muzzles as the frost that covered everything in the tomb began to melt. After an explore with the drones, three of the scientists decided to tackle it head on. They suited up and headed to the large stone monolith that jutted from the iceberg and acted as the front door. Others began to clean the equipment. While wiping down the drones, some of the water hung off the sides, drooping down like dog slobber. The little soldiers' hearts raced as they held their positions. Behind the shimmering walls of protection it looked like blurs of silver and brown, but they knew what waited on the other side. Metal ships and the monstrous four-legged men that wheedled them, ready for the attack. A dark energy pulsed across the field and the large stone statues began to move. The plan was in place. Their power sabotaged from the inside by a mole. There was nothing they could do but wait. The wall flickered out and snapped into focus was the men, their machines, and the city they stood ready to defend. The little soldiers rushed in to conquer the last stronghold that stood against them. She'd head off to another land, some deserted island far away. She pointed the dragon into the distance and flew. She fell asleep to thoughts of her newfound freedoms, freedoms from responsibility and judgment. She awoke to yelling as the dragon descended into a crowd around the castle. Starving, injured, and angry, her people screamed for her head. The swarm buzzed by, the hard outer shells clanged against the shreds of armor spread across the field. The battle had brought them food. Enemies turned allies, but it didn't help. Every death gave them more places to nest, to reproduce. The general sat as he listened to them clang against the bunker. He heard a crunch of metal, and the muffled buzz was suddenly much clearer. The ground was scorched black. Ashen handprints covered the room. Outside, the net was lit up by emergency lights as the custodian was treated for minor burns. Now he understood why they kept guards posted at a furnace. The circle of light shrunk with every frantic kick to get closer. With a combination of shedding his heavy coat and sheer panic, he broke through the surface with enough speed to leap into the air. He landed with a thud and a billow of sand. The air of the landscape was a far cry from the frigid temps that still chilled his bones. He twisted his head just in time to see the last of the puddle disappear into haze. They were traveling on a stretch of road lined by forest and lit up by moonlight when something leapt from the treetops. The creature hovered for a moment with large kite-like wings silhouetted against the stars before diving down. Revealed in the headlights as it swooped over the car was the build of a man with the bulbous red eyes and shiny shell of an insect. In the rear view, when it landed, that's when they noticed. A generous distance behind them, with headlights out, there was another car. Even from inside their own car, they could hear sharp claws tearing into metal. Tires squealed, and the creature and car were sent into the ditch. For weeks, they didn't discuss it, but eventually the questions became too much. What was it? Why had it passed them over? Had it saved them? Was it even real? The only conclusion they came to was death was coming for someone that night, and they had gotten lucky.